And now our fourth story. Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel today told Iran that time is running out for the country to stop its alleged nuclear weapons program. Giving these evil attentions, the leading powers in the world must show force and clarity and not weakness. They shouldn't make concessions to Iran. They should present the sharp and unequivocal demands. He picked today because inspectors from the International Atomic Energy Agency met with Iranian officials in Tehran this afternoon. U.S. and other Western governments are meeting with Iranian negotiators in Baghdad this week. And this is a crucial week. If there is no deal, it could be the tipping point for military action. Up front tonight, Joe Sirsioni, a member of Secretary of State Clinton's International Security Advisory Board and the Council on Foreign Relations, and Human Majid, author of The Ayatollah's Democracy. Good to have both of you with us. And Joe, why is this week so important? We haven't had sustained negotiations with Iran for uh, over two years. So the key here is whether this week's discussion can lead to a process where we move from high-level occasional meetings mm -hmm. to an actual operationalization of a compromise plan. Will Iran give the West what it wants, which is a slowdown in its program? Will the West give Iran what it wants, which is a slowdown in the sanctions? This week will tell. And, and, and I want to ask the sanctions in a moment from, from Human, but first, one of the major problems, Joe, has been access to one of Iran's most secretive military sites, and this I'm referring to is called Parchin. In yes. recent weeks, governments hostile to Iran have leaked pictures of devices where they see nuclear explosions have been tested in the past at Parchin. And, and this is a crucial question. Will Iran, do you think, give full, unfettered access to the site? Right. Well, not nuclear explosions tested, but it's possible that they were constructing a site to test some components of a nuclear device. It's a military site. IAE inspectors are there today. They want to have access to the site. Just Director General Amano was optimistic about the possibility of getting a deal. Mm -hmm. We'll know in about 24 hours. Uh, this is part of what Iran has to do to begin to restore some confidence that their program is indeed for peaceful uses, right. as they claim, and to extend the warning time should they break out of the IAEA inspection process. And, and, and Human, what I'm referring to is an AP report, which they said was leaked to a government yes, hostile to correct. Iran, that had this device that they said was there. Um, but, but the question is, if there's nothing to hide, which Iran says there is nothing to hide, why not just give full access and shut everybody up about the satellite pictures of the site and what's there and what isn't there? Well, I think there. I mean, I think Iran wants to act, be treated like every other country in the world with a certain amount of respect. Mm -hmm. um, that's what they say anyway. Right. And, and if they give immediately give access to whatever inspectors want, even though it's not on the list of things they have to give access to, because it's not a declared nuclear not site, declared so therefore site. they don't right. have to give access right. to, to it, then they feel like they're being treated differently as second-class citizens in the world. I mean, the U.S. doesn't give access to its military sites. Other countries don't give access to military sites, right. uh, to in international inspectors. So Iran says, we already have given them access to Parchina, and they did in 2005. Now, that's a long time ago. Right. Um, and I do think, actually, that there will be, um, they will be allowed to have access to that site. But I think Iran also wants to see some development in this mm -hmm. process that Joe was talking about, which is like this process of negotiations that's going to lead to something. And that's why they, I think they're holding off on giving that access right away and saying, oh, yeah. They have well, it as a chip. I think so, yes. And, and, yeah. and, and, and I refer to this week as a tipping point, and, and Prime Minister Netanyahu is, mm -hmm. is, why, is why I did that. I mean, Human, he said to me in, in an interview a few weeks ago, he will accept zero enrichment from Iran. Right. Now, the United States' position seems to be, uh, Senator Feinstein was talking right. about this the other day, somewhere around 5%, which you could use for medicine, things right. like that. Right. Not just as, that doesn't just mean that U.S. and Israel aren't on the same page. Um, it means that there's nothing Israel will accept. And Iran has said categorically they'll never go to zero. Right. So at what point does one side cave here? And by that I'm talking about Israel and Iran. Well, I think that uh, in, if, if we believe all the leaked stories about what the U.S. would be willing to accept, then, then it's true that they would be willing to accept some form some. of enrichment. Even Hillary Clinton has said that, and I believe that to be mm -hmm. the case. I mean, it is a little odd that a country that isn't a member of the NPT or isn't a signatory to the NPT and has nuclear weapons is dictating terms to a country that is a signatory to the NPT and doesn't have nuclear weapons as far as their own intelligence service tells them and our intelligence service tells us. So I think that's a little strange. I think they're mm -hmm. trying to put pressure on the U.S. more than they are on Iran to try to get the U.S. To not... To back them. Well, to back them and also to not make a deal that the Israelis would be uncomfortable with at this point because and it does appear that there is, some, there is some space between Israel and Iran on what they feel is acceptable for Iran to have. And, and, and Joe, a, a, a crucial question and a, fi a final question here. Iran has said uh, they really want these sanctions rolled back. The toughest sanctions have not yet taken effect. 
um, it seems from people I've talked to in Washington that there is no appetite in the U.S. to roll those back. I mean, is that your your interpretation, or would the U.S. consider softening those sanctions uh, this summer, which obviously could could result in Israel making a, a choice that the U.S. doesn't want them to make? Well, you're right, Aaron. In fact, the U.S. Senate just passed another sanctions bill today, increasing the, the proposed sanctions. Mm -hmm. So what if you're the Iran and you want a relief from what is becoming a, a crushing sanction regime that is really uh, killing the Iranian economy and the yeah. price of oil has dropped, so they're not getting as many revenues. You want something from the, the West, from the partners there. What can they give? They can give a delay in future sanctions. You, could have, you might be able to see the European Union delay the oil in embargo, which has yet, not yet gone into effect. You could see the president relax some news. sections for humanitarian yeah. reasons on some banks. That's what Iran's going to be looking for. That'll be the most politically sensitive part of these negotiations. Oh, and that will... I don't even know what that would do in Tel Aviv. <laughs> okay, thanks to both of you.